guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to The Casual Puzzler. I am showing you a new puzzle brand today, but they are not a new company. They just started recently branching out into the puzzling world and they are originally are a gaming company, a board game, card game company. They're called Big Potato Games. They're from the UK, but they do sell here in the US. I believe you can find some of their card games at Target. So they are branching out into puzzles and I feel like the way that they transitioned is really cool because it's kind of a puzzle and a game in one. So they did reach out and send me these puzzles, but I told them I would be 100% honest and they were totally okay with that, which I love. Now, the one that I will show you today is this one here, which is Day at the Festival, but they do have a second puzzle, which is called Night at the Movies, which is a drive-in theater type situation, and then this one is a festival, like a music festival. And they are part game, part board game, because they are a seek and find, but they're more like riddle seek and find, so, I will show you what I mean in just a second when I unbox it because I did already do this one and you'll see me putting it together and I did do the riddle section kinda but I just have a lot of thoughts so let me just show you me unboxing it and figuring it out and doing the puzzle and I'll come back here in just a moment to share my experience so let's just get into it. Here are the two puzzles up close so you can see them. As you can see, each one has 101 hidden artists to find while you build the puzzle. Let me just show you one up close. I'm not gonna do both of these today. Um, the one that I do not do, I'll just show on my Instagram whenever it is complete. Um, but I think the one that I've been wanting to do the most, I think it's Stay at the Festival. So let's take a closer look at this one. All right, so here's the front of the box. This box in general is like a super sturdy cardboard. The graphic is wrapped around the edges. And then on the back of the puzzle, it says, guess the bands and artists while you build the puzzle. And it gives you a little blurb about it. So it says, everyone loves a jigsaw. The trouble is, once it's been built, the challenge is over until now. In Day at the Festival, we've gone straight to the main stage and filled it with a whopping 101 riddles for you to find while you build. Here is an example. And it has like, so this here is meat plus loaf, so it's which brand is it, which obviously is meatloaf, so that's kind of cool. Um, it is plastic free, I don't know if you can see that up here. And then it says, armed with a handy checklist to tick off as you go, your job is to build the puzzle, track down the riddles, and figure out the hidden band behind each one. Think you can find them all? That sounds really fun and hard at the same time. There's 101 of them. Let's just open this up. Here inside the box, again, the branding is super cute. Um, it is a plastic-free company, which is really cool. So they don't have a plastic bag, they have just a paper one. There's also this paper sticker, which is fun. And then let's see what this is. Oh, this is about the, let's open this first. All right, so this says the exact same thing that was on the back of the box. And let's just see what, oh, so it's a poster of the full image, which is handy because the box actually doesn't contain the full image. And this is super fun. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is the puzzle or the outside is included in the puzzle. I'm guessing it's just this part. That's my guess. But this is so much fun. Let's see what the back has. Oh, okay. So this is where you, the little checklist is and then it shows all the different riddles. This looks, I'm gonna do this part afterwards. Let's just look at the puzzle. All right, so my initial thought is that they're super bright and colorful. Like every single one is like saturated in pigment. They're super bright, really nice pieces. They're not super thick, but they aren't super thin either. I feel like they're a very standard like puzzle piece. Hopefully you can see them okay, but they are super bright, very colorful, traditional puzzle shapes. They are pretty glossy, so if you're working in particular lighting, it may be difficult, but I work in some crazy lighting, so we'll see if I have any challenges with that because they are quite glossy. I'm not sure if you can see that. 
There's also just a smidge of puzzle dust, but nothing crazy, pretty standard. Um, in general, the pieces look and feel really nice. Again, the only thing I could see which may hinder you is the shine, but let's just see how it is. Let's see how the fit is. Let's see how the puzzle is. And then afterwards, we will do the riddle portion of this puzzle. So let's just get started. making progress but I'm not making progress at the same time um, but this is where I'm at currently I do need to charge my camera but I just want to show you where I'm at my current method is pretty much just like taking 20 random pieces out of the box and then finding where they go and I'm in no rush to like finish this puzzle so I've been enjoying that method you know I'm just taking my time doing a few pieces here and there, and it's slowly coming together. I feel like I'm getting a better grasp of the image, so I think it's gonna go faster as it goes on. Um, but that is where I'm at currently, and I just need to charge the camera. So that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna continue this on while I'm waiting, and I'll be back in a minute. I think I'm calling it a night. I will be back tomorrow. Um, made really good progress. I'm definitely going to be able to finish tomorrow. What's really annoying to me is that I'm still missing, I don't know if you can see, but I'm missing still three edge pieces, two up there, one down here. You'd think with all the different times I've like shifted through the box, I didn't notice them. So I'll see you back here tomorrow. guys so I had just finished this puzzle and I was super super bummed because as you can see down here there was a piece missing and I looked all underneath I didn't think I had it ready to email them to be like hey you sent me a puzzle without a piece and I found it it was underneath my seat I'm so happy that I had the last piece which goes right there so here we have the full image. It is so bright and colorful. 
so much stuff going on. Um, now I need to do the seek and find portion or like the riddle portion, see how many I can get. I do know at the top of my head as I was like doing it, I'm like, oh, there's one, there's one. So I'm just gonna see how many I can do. I'm going to put in some close-up images so you guys can try to decipher some yourself. Um, but we're just gonna see how many I can guess. All right, so I am back and I didn't really do much of the riddle portion of it because it was late at night, but I feel like I didn't want to find them all all right then because I wanted to keep it together for a longer period of time, which is super rare for me. Usually I'll do a puzzle, be like, okay, it's done, and then I take it apart within like minutes, where this one I... I have a feeling I might like temporarily keep it together like as a wall piece, which I never do, um, just because I really like the idea of just like discovering the different riddles over time versus doing it all at, in one sitting. I think it's just a really fun image to look at and I could see me doing the second one and doing a similar situation like once I'm done finding all the riddles in here. It reminds me of we have a picture in our hallway which I guess I can put on the screen so you can see, but it's a Disney picture and it's abstract with like words. So you like have to find the words. And so they have like a ton of different words that are kind of tricky to find, some are easy to find. And I feel like we've had that picture for, I want to say like six years now and I still find new things. And so that kind of reminded me of this because I feel like I would discover new riddles and be like, oh my gosh, there it is um, as the time goes on. So I feel like I'm just going to not glue it because I would love to do it again, um, but I would consider like taping the back so I can at least have it together for a longer period of time without worrying about it like falling apart. So I never do that. So that just shows you how much I enjoyed it. Now let's just go into my experience now that I've done the puzzle. Clearly I enjoyed the experience and I am enjoying the riddle part portion of it. But as far as the puzzle pieces go, I really enjoyed it. They aren't the thickest puzzle pieces, but they are nice quality. I do think they lean a lot more towards the shiny side. I would say comparable to Buffalo Game Puzzles, not as shiny as Eboo. So if that helps you out at all, I hope it does. But for me, it was shiny, but not impossible since the puzzle was pretty bright and colorful. I didn't have issues running into like dark pieces, like scaring the color because of light. Does that make sense? So I really didn't mind that it was super glossy, but I could see it being troubling for others. The puzzle though was super bright and colorful and I love that pretty much every single piece had its place. Nothing was super hard. I did it pretty quickly and I really didn't have a method to the madness because it's this type of puzzle. I feel like I did a similar situation when I did the white mount to 1980s puzzle where I just like pretty much pick up a piece and put it in its spot even if it doesn't mean that nothing else is with it I at least relatively know where it's going to go and that was fine with me because over the course of the whole puzzle I was pretty much like taking out 20 to 30 pieces at a time quickly finding where it would go and then getting more pieces from the box so that was my strategy and it was pretty easy to do that way I didn't have to like search for like all the green pieces all the pink pieces you know all of this particular item I really just went wild <laughs> and just did whatever I saw and I would like just take random like 20 pieces if I saw in the box that there was a piece like I knew where it went I would take that out so I really did just work from the box over the course of a few days but I only spent maybe six hours which is pretty standard for me um, for a thousand pieces. I really enjoyed this one and I'm excited to do, discover more of these riddles and I want Dave to take a peek at it too because he's really into this type of thing so I feel like he'll be able to find them more or at least like understand them more than I would. As far as Night of the Movies, I haven't done it yet but I do like the colors. Now this one here I think would be the harder of the two because the colors, you know, so there's a lot of pinks and purples and pastels and I do better when it's like super bright and bold. So I'm excited to do this one. Now, my biggest gripe for this brand is that the puzzle picture isn't on the box in its full format. You do get a poster, which is nice to you know that you do end up having the full image. And yes, I could have like taped it on the wall or found a way to like keep it secure where it needed to go. But not having it on the box just kind of annoyed me. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm alone in this. But I would much prefer having the box like standing on its own. Like even if it's like propped up with the inside box, you know. 
me get this up like propped up like this. That's usually how I have my puzzle box. So that way I could even like use a separate third box to have the puzzle pieces in. But that way I know like the image is like secure and I can see it and just like glance up at it whenever I needed to. Where having it on a poster, it was so annoying. Cause I feel like I constantly was like either losing the poster, the poster was like underneath something, or I'd be like looking at it and like trying to find where things are and it's like flimsy. So it's just like a finicky thing that annoyed me. Um, not so much that I wouldn't buy them again in the future, but I, I just feel like that's something that I would change if I was them, or if I had built a puzzle brand, I would make sure that the full image is on the box. Even if they want to do like this wrap type thing, have like the full image on the back of the box, you know, just so you can see it in a more secure manner. So that is my biggest gripe from them is the image on the box, but I mean, that's kind of minor considering I really enjoyed this puzzle. They are $20 a piece. They do only have the two currently, but I think that is a very reasonable price point. I kind of like this transition of them going from like pup gaming brand to puzzle brand because it's kind of like a game and puzzle in one. I think that was really smart on their end, um, but I really enjoyed this. I could see myself buying more from them. I'll leave their stuff down below if you want to check them out. And that's all I have for you. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.